Hello my fellow gamers, this is your pal Galactus here. We will get to know each other pretty well over time, but the first thing you should know about me is that I am a trophy hunter. Like all trophy hunters, my journey has had a bit of a rocky start. There were some glorifying highs and some soul crushing lows. As a trophy hunter, I have felt the joy that comes with finally unlocking the platinum, that rush of excitement of killing the final boss, the calming sense of achievement that I have finally overcome everything this game can throw at me and I can finally move on. But I have also been frustrated, blamed every developer out there and broken enough controllers to open my own video games play part store. I have made a lot of friends, some enemies as well. I have heard all the insults and I have heard most of them myself. Sometimes to my co-op buddies, sometimes to the game and sometimes even to the weather and the electricity board. The power cut in the middle of a gaming session is triggering on a different level folks. But with all that said, trophy hunting is a part of me and I don't think I'll be slowing down anytime soon. It is who I am. And with that satisfying amount of self-obsession, let's move on with the video. Here are 10 games that you should start your trophy hunting journey with. Whether you are a seasoned trophy hunter or someone looking to start on this lifelong journey of wonderful discoveries and achievements, these are the games that you should play to understand what trophy hunting is really like. They are challenging enough to give you an idea of where you stand, but not too difficult to make you give up gaming entirely. But most importantly, these are all amazing games that even if you're not into trophy hunting, you should definitely play them at least once. And a tiny disclaimer before we start, this is my personal list and you don't have to agree with everything I say, but I think you'll find going through these games a damn good time. Let's start with number 10, Marvel Spider-Man. If you're a Spider-Man fan or even a Marvel movies fan, then this one is technically a no brainer if you're not, then you probably will be once you play this game. Insomniac Games have created a beautiful depiction of New York filled with all the prominent landmarks from the Marvel Universe. There are a ton of easter eggs and references for long-time Spidey fans like me who has been reading the comics since, since I could technically read. Web singing feels amazing and it's super fun to move around the city as Spider-Man dressed up in your favorite costumes. Combat feels what Spider-Man combat should feel like and there is a decent selection of villains for you to do face to face along with a bunch of villains. On top of all that, the story is really really good with great characters and dialogues. It really lets you live up to the fantasy of being Spider-Man in it. Okay, guys, you are looking at a 3 out of 10 difficulty as you can do everything on easy and there are not a lot of hidden items for you to find. Most of the stuff you will come across naturally while playing the game. It is not long either with the platinum taking around 20 hours and it will be over before you get tired of the game. It even has a remastered version on PS5 where you can transfer the safe and auto pop all trophies giving you 2 platinums for your efforts. There are also 3 chapters of DLC and they are really fun to play as well. I would highly suggest playing the Silver Sable DLC as it is one of my favorite DLC released on any game in recent years. 9 on the list is Hogwarts Legacy. This is for all the Harry Potter fans out there. But even if you have no connection to the books or movies, this is still a pretty fun game that you definitely should play. It's not directly connected to Harry Potter in any way except that it's set in Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. The game is set years before any of the characters in the book were even born and you play as a fifth year starting late at the school. You can select your own house and live out your fantasy of being a young witch or wizard in Hogwarts learning all types of spells and getting in all kinds of trouble. The world is not limited to Hogwarts as you can explore the surrounding areas as well including Hogsmeade and the Forbidden Forest. There are a lot of unique magical creatures you can interact with it as well. The combat is really good and stands out with a variety of spells that you can use to play your way. There is a lot to explore but it's mostly fun and it has a decent story that keeps things going. Cool. The real star of the game though is the castle itself. It's a huge structure with different wings which are fully explorable and filled with tons of secrets, easter eggs and references to find. It's really well made with talking paintings, moving staircases and even the room of requirements which you can enter and explore. And it features peas as well. You get brooms and mounts to fly around in the open world as well and just by playing the game you can tell that there was a lot of love put into this one. Trophy wise, another easy platinum as you can do everything on easy, nothing particularly missable but some trophies and collectibles can get bugged, especially on the PS4. So I would suggest looking them up in a guide before starting. 
I did not encounter any such bugs and my collectible counter glitched in a positive way which got me the trophy earlier than I was supposed to but it can differ in your case. The game has a lot of collectibles and you have to find almost all of them for the platinum. So a guide is recommended but you can find them on your own if you are thorough enough. Pro tip check for collectibles in the animal shelter in room of requirement if you find yourself missing something. This is another 3 out of 10 difficulty platinum that should take you around 40-50 hours to complete. It auto pops from PS4 to PS5 but not the other way around. If you are looking for a complete platinum walkthrough, you can find one on this channel. At number 8, we got Uncharted 4 A Thief's End. Before Last of Us was all the rage all around the world, the Uncharted series is what pushed Naughty Dog to the upper echelon of PlayStation Studios. While there are certain mechanics of the game that may feel dated today, there is no doubt that this is still a must play for every PlayStation owner. The game has great acting, characters and story. It features a great platforming and bombastic action sequences which Naughty Dog is famous for. There is a ton to explore and a lot of secrets to find and it has a decent stealth system as well. And this game looks absolutely stunning on whatever platform you play which is saying something as it is a pretty old game. The graphics absolutely still hold up. On PS5, it's available as the Uncharted Thieves collection which also features the Lost Legacy standalone which is another great addition to the franchise. Trophy wise, this is a bit tougher as you have to complete the game on crushing difficulty which is the hardest difficulty in the game but it can be made substantially easy with the help of modifiers. There are some collectibles and chapter specific trophies but nothing is missable as chapter select is available once you beat the game. This is a game that is fun to play for the platinum as trophies are simply an excuse to keep playing. If you did the platinum of the game on PS4, you can transfer the save to PS5 and auto pop almost all the trophies and clear the rest with a few hours of game. Game number 7 is Ghost of Sushi. Set in feudal Japan, Ghost of Tsushima is basically Sucker Punch giving Assassin's Creed fans what they had been asking for for years and also teaching Ubisoft a thing or two about how a fun, open world stealth game should be made. This game is absolutely stunning and has unique mechanics that guide you to your objective without using the HUD to give you maximum immersion. Stealth is cool and combat is actively very fun and deep with a different stances and cool ninja tools at your disposal. This is one game that for as good as it looks is also amazingly optimized with great performance on all PlayStation systems and really short loading times. The standoffs do stand out in Tsushima. You can also make choices that affect how the story pans out but it has no effect on the drop. Is another easy one as you can do almost everything on easy and apart from a couple of collectibles you will come across almost everything if you are paying attention when you do the story inside content. I will give this another 3 out of 10 for difficulty and around 30-40 hours for the platinum and yes it does support the auto option. At number 6 we have control. From Remedy, the creators of Ellen Wake and Max Payne comes the new IP control which is set in the same universe as Ellen Wake. So if you are excited about Ellen Wake 2 and wondering whether to play it, this is the game for you. Control is a very unique game with supernatural and psychic elements. The story is weird, the characters are weird, the setting is weird and the enemies are definitely weird. But it's the good kind of weird that makes this game a ton of fun to play. In typical Remedy fashion, this game has some unique mechanics that are fun to experiment with and it gives you a decent sandbox to try out different moves, abilities and weapons on a variety of enemies. I'm not gonna say too much about this game because I want you to experience it for yourself. So go and check this game out if you can. Trophy wise, this used to be a 5 out of 10, but with the new accessibility features, you can activate god mode and one hit kills among other modes. That make this uh, 2 out of 10. Nothing technically visible in the game, but the map is a bit weird sometimes, so you might have to check online for some play. You can do the platinum within 10 hours in this game. I will be posting a speedrun video soon where you can get all the trophies in one run. No auto pop on this one. Game number 5 is Hollow Knight. Hollow Knight is a 2D action platformer, but don't let that turn you. This game is almost entirely hand drawn, which means every single frame of the game looks absolutely beautiful. The story and characters of the game are awesome, it has great combat, 
really fun abilities and gameplay mechanics and some of the best boss fights in any game with mad levels of platforming. I really love this game and I can't tell you how beautiful it looks and how well it plays. This will take getting some used to but once you start understanding the mechanics and unlock new skills you will understand what I'm talking about. This game will consistently blow you away. I would recommend all my viewers to try this game out at least once. But before you do that let me point it out that this game sits at a 10 out of 10 difficulty on the platinum if you do it legit. But there is actually a glitch that you can use to make yourself invincible to all damage. The only difficulty is activating the glitch as you need an ability to unlock it and you will have to play the game till that point. So with the glitch this game comes down to a simple 4 out of 10 as you will take no damage once you get there even from the platforming hazards. If you do get it legit then congratulations on being a god level player <laughs> but no one will believe. This one should take you about 40 hours or a lifetime depending on how you want to tackle. No auto pops here as there is no PS5 version of the game. At number 4 we have Elden Ring. Yes, yes, I know you are either laughing so hard that you fell off your chair or you have raised your eyebrows so high that your nose is beginning to itch. But stay with me. I know you are probably going like this dude wants me to start with Elden Ring. I want what he had in this coffee this morning. And I get it. Just hear me out. I know from software games are a challenge but they are actually not that hard to platinum. You can go over to any trophy tracking site and check for yourself. None of the games from the Souls genre are actually ultra rare platinums. Which clearly means that a lot more people can do it than you think. And Elden Ring currently sits at 40% rarity for its platinum. Which means almost half the people that have the game have the plan. The trick with ROM software games is patience. Yes, you will die a lot. But that doesn't mean you should be discouraged by it. You are supposed to learn from it. This is why I am suggesting Elden Ring at the start of your journey because this game will teach you the virtue of patience while going for the trophies which is one of the most important skill as a trophy hunter and beating it will give you the confidence to take on more challenging trophies in the future. As I already said Elden Ring is the easiest of the Souls game and it gives you a lot of tools to use that you can experiment to suit your favorite style. There is no wrong combination here. You can use shields, hammers, spears, dual swords and magic spells and even bows and crossbows to take on the many enemies in the game. Or you can just put all your points in bigger and equip heavy armor to tank any damage that is thrown at you. There is a lot to explore in this game and it will keep surprising you along the way. This is not just a challenge but a really fun game as well. The best tip I can give you is to pick up a farming stop where there are a bunch of enemies so you can farm levels and ability points to level up your character. The game has really poor scaling and if you level yourself up most of the enemies and bosses will stop being a challenge. If you do come across a really tough spot you can go in another direction and come back when you are stronger. There is a learning curve here but putting your time into it will teach you almost every aspect of trophy hunting that you need to know for the future. I would recommend using a guide for this one as there are some missable trophies but that should not stop you from trying this game out. Also this game has multiple endings which means multiple ending trophies but you can do it in a single run with another very important tool for trophy hunters, safe file manipulation. I think this game sits fairly at a 5 or 6 out of 10 difficulty and can take you anywhere between 30 to 60 hours depending on your skill level. I have the complete platinum walkthrough upon my channel which you can follow to get every collectible and unlock all endings in a single run. No auto pop but you can transfer your save and do everything in new game plus. With your leveled up character your second run should be fairly easy. At number 3 we have Witcher 3 The Wild Hunt. The game that made CD Projekt Red a household name. For every gamer at least. This is the ultimate RPG experience which does still hold up after many years of its release. The writing, characters, world building and gameplay are all top notch here. This game is in many ways the reason that I am a trophy hunter now. When I played it I had no experience with trophy hunting but I was just so engaged in the world and its stories that I just didn't care. I had to do multiple playthroughs to unlock everything in this game and it did not matter to me because I, mean, I was having so much fun making different choices every time. This game holds the record for the most amount of hours I have put in a single player game ever. 
Also, please do not judge this game by its adaptation on Netflix. While that show keeps falling to forsaken depths after season one, this game is filled with consistent, amazing highs. While you do play as a title character in this game, the main point is that you are just a person in this well-crafted and beautifully realized universe. There's so much stuff to do in this game, and nearly all of it is fun. While the combat and core gameplay is great, the best part are the people you interact with and how your decisions change their story. And you will encounter every single mythical creature you can imagine in this game. Trophy-wise, this game will also test your patience as there are multiple trophies and choices you can make that may lock you out of some trophies. So I would recommend you follow a guide if you want to do everything in a single playthrough. Although going in blind and spoiler-free will be an even better experience. You do need to complete the game on the highest difficulty, but it's not too tough, and you can talk your way out of most battles. I'll give this a five out of ten in terms of difficulty and seventy to one fifty hours for the plat, depending on how you want to play. This game also has two great expansions that, if you like the game, you must absolutely play them. No auto pops for this one. Game number two is Bloodborne. Yes, I completely agree with those fits and laugh laughter and raised eyebrows this time. I know you're probably thinking this guy has just made this video to show off his tougher plans, but that is only partially true. I completely agree that Bloodborne is a tough platinum, and unless you are a glutton for punishment, you probably shouldn't go for it. This game is the exception to the rule I set up at the start of this video. The reason I have this game on my list is because this was my first platinum on my PS4, and once I did it, I had, for lack of a better term, tasted blood, and was lusting for more platinums to add to my collection. I was thoroughly brutalized by this game, and the only reason it's on the list is because if I had not done this one, then probably all my other platinums would have never happened. That's why this game is so important to me. I totally love it, and while it is a challenge, I seriously think this is one of the best games ever made. This is where I learned all the virtues I have been speaking about as a trophy hunter. When I learned this game has multiple endings, that's when I activated my PS Plus trial to back up my save so I don't have to do another play. Now let me be fair that while I do think you should absolutely play this game, it is quite a bit of a challenge. The things I said about Elden Ring don't apply here. While Elden Ring will reward your patience, Bloodborne will probably just keep punishing you. Elden Ring might help you grow your skills, but Bloodborne will show you the mirror. It will test you with every battle, and if you make a mistake, it will put you on the ground and stomp you in the face. But it will also help you become who you are meant to be. It will build your character, teach you resilience, and mold you into a trophy hunting veteran if you can overcome its challenges. There are no shields, no magic. tight parry windows and no heavy armor but there is a beautiful world great bosses some of the best secrets and some of the coolest weapons ever in any game to date trophy wise i believe it is a 7 out of 10 and can take you between 70 hours to eternity to get the plat i hope you are brave enough to take the challenge no auto pop as this is only available on ps4 And finally, at number one, we have God of War Ragnarok. Now, this game is pure love. This is more of an emotion than a game. Even if you don't platinum it, you would be a complete fool not to play it. And if you play it, why would you not platinum it? Because most of the stuff you do for the plat will come naturally as you complete all the quests, and you must absolutely do them for the amazing moments you get in each of them. I was completely sold on this game by the Fenrir storyline alone. and you got pet wolves as well yay i have absolutely been in love with kratos since god of war debuted on the playstation 2 and to see how far this character has come fills me with pure joy as for the game it has so many awesome moments back to back that it blows my mind that they can keep it up great boss battles combat system that is actually very deep lots of cool stuff to find everywhere and of course kratos Where Bloodborne was the start of my platinum journey in many ways, Ragnarok was my 500th plat, a milestone that I did not believe I could achieve, and it felt really good to top it off with this game. 
won't say much except that you absolutely have to play this game if you own a PlayStation. It's a 3 out of 10 on difficulty and can be wrapped up in about 35 to 40 hours and yes, you cannot top up all trophies from either version. I do have a complete platinum walkthrough on my channel where I drop a lot of lore info having played all the God of War games and you should definitely check it out. So there you have it folks, top 10 games that you should start your trophy hunting journey with. I really hope you like this video, trying something new here so please be sure to leave your feedback in the comment section and if you would like and subscribe to my channel it will go a long way in helping me out. Apart from that, wherever you are, whatever you are doing, stay safe, stay healthy and stay busy playing some good games.